Okay, so this is a good tooth or a good case to um, explain or convey the thought process that goes through my mind when I treat a calcified tooth or a difficult tooth. So I'll, let me just take you through the various uh, stages of what happens when we treat such a tooth. Okay, so I first saw this case. Um, she had come for a consultation and uh, her main complaint was food impaction between the maxillary first molar and the maxillary second molar. Now, when you look at this clinically, you can find that there's a carious, uh, there's, there's a cavity, uh, dental decay between the these two teeth. Uh, but I didn't want to sort this out uh, immediately because she, she had just a day. She was flying out to Delhi the next day. And then she said she's going to be in Delhi for about six months or something like that. So instead of me doing something halfway, I decided that I would refer her to somebody I know in Delhi. So uh, she met uh, the, the de de dentist whom I referred to. Uh, she met him in Delhi. And then this dentist called me up from Delhi and said that he was finding it very difficult to locate the canal. Apparently, he, he already had a couple of sessions, but he couldn't find, the, find any canals in this particular tooth. So... Um, after that, I didn't hear much. I mean, and then I don't know what happened after that, but this patient came back after six months. And then when she came back, I took a radiograph. This is what I found. So I found that meanwhile, the crown had disappeared. I'm not sh really sure what happened, but she was without a crown in this tooth. And there was an evidence of an access cavity made in this particular tooth. And it, it's not very clear because there doesn't seem to be any canal in this tooth. So uh, what we decided to do was isolate this tooth and see what's happened so far. So when I isolated this tooth, this is what I found. I found that uh, there's quite a bit of food impaction there inside the cavity. There's an evidence of an access cavity for patient, which is already there, and food stuck there. Now, when you remove the food, you can see quite a bit of soft decay. So we cleaned up all that. And once you clean up all that, we had a pretty good look at the tooth itself. Now, what do we do in a situation like this? We first evaluate. Okay, now what is the cavity that the previous dentist has made there? And what about the rest of the tooth structure? So you can see the cavities in the middle. When you look at this palately, you see that there seems to be some calcified tissue here palately, and there's quite a lot of tooth structure between this part and the pal external palatal surface. So that part uh, looks like there's uh, there's this, this. If you drill around this area, it's quite safe. So that's what we see on the palatal aspect. What do we see on the on the buccal aspect? Buccal aspect, we find that. It's not so conclusive because the tooth structure is slightly less than the palatal. And I'm not really sure whether it's safe to drill here or not. Uh, we don't have that much of uh, clues at this point in time. Then, as always, what I do is I fill this uh, existing cavity with water. And then I get a microscopic perspective of the whole uh, whole tooth. So what I see is that it, the cavity is fairly middle. And there's quite a bit of tooth structure, both palately as well as uh, buccally. Once we have that information, then we clean out the water, dry it, and say, what's the first step? So the first step seems to be that it's it's okay to remove this calcified portion because you can see this is calcified pulp chamber. So we, the first thing I would do is I would remove this calcified portion and see what's underneath, So which is what I did. I drilled through this area. And then once I drilled through this, I could uh, find a, you can see a K file there and a small catch there and what seems to be a canal. So that's what I did. I cleaned this area up and sure enough, uh, there was a canal there. So once I found one canal, by this time it was quite a, almost an hour had passed by and uh, we had uh, lost quite a bit of time. So once you look at a canal, uh, the next job is to find out where to look for any additional canals, if there are additional canals or is it just the one canal? I'm not really sure at this stage. So what I did was I put calcium hydroxide into this uh, the canal which I already found and I put a temporary filling and decided to take an inter-appointment CBCT. Um, so in the inter-appointment CBCT, what we, so you can see here, this is calcium hydroxide in the canal and you look at the radiograph, it looks like a single canal. So I'm not really sure what to do. So we took a cone beam CT. In the cone beam CT, it's pretty clear that there is a distinctively a distal mesobuccal and a distal buccal roots which are untouched so far. And you can see the calcium hydroxide in a distinctive palatal canal. So once you have this information, then you have a little more clarity as to where to look for the canal. So it's clear that wherever we have found the canal, uh, 
far away buckle to where we found the palatal, there's clearly a distal buckle and a sorry, a buckle and a distal buckle canal. So once you have that information, things become a bit more cred, uh, more clear. So you know that this is a palatal, and if there is a major buckle, distal buckle, it's going to be here. So once we have that information, then we can confidently remove this entire uh, portion, including the filling there. We can see a bit of secondary decay there as well. So we start cleaning up this area and then we found the mesio. You can see the characteristic white spot here uh, that shows, tells you that it's calcified. So once you see a white spot like that, then if we take a small munz bird and then precisely drill out this white spot, and sure enough, that's where the, the canal is. So that's the mesio buccal canal. And then uh, we look for the distal buccal again. You can see evidence of a white spot there, over there. So we drill out this portion here. And sure enough, uh, that's where the distal buccal canal is. So you have your mesial buccal and your distal buccal. Uh, and then we just uh, have a look at it from far. You can see mesial buccal, distal buccal, and then the palatal down there. And then when we obturate, we remove the filling, clean up this whole thing, and then build it up completely. We put a post there because quite a bit of tooth structure destroyed. And then this tooth's done. And then we move on to to the adjacent tooth and you can see here the main problem is the mesial buccal root the distal buccal and the palatal seems okay so what we do is we go in there take out the glass ionomer filling there clean up this whole area and immediately you can see the mesial buccal distal buccal and palatal and the characteristic white line leading into the uh, mesial buccal canal which, ha which has been left untouched in the previous treatment but in this case, uh, what we do is we clean the major buckle, the distal buckle, the palatal. I didn't touch the palatal. I just cleaned out the the, the distal buckle, the major buckle, MB1 and the MB2, and then just filled up just these three. We left the palatal alone because there wasn't any need to touch the palatal. So uh, this is how it looks, and this is the post-op. So you can see the major buckle, distal buckle filled, palatal left as it is, and then this is the other two. So and then uh, yeah, this in a nutshell is the treatment. Uh, this is a one-year recall of the same case. You can see it seems to be healing and doing pretty well.